So in this lecture, we're going to look at how we can solve our dynamic system of equations. Let's just remind ourselves what that dynamic system of equations are. So we have mass times acceleration plus damping times velocity plus stiffness times displacement equals some load that is varying with time, so f of t. And we're going to be looking at how we can develop a step-by-step -step integration procedure. So if we know what our system looks like at time t, i.e. we know the displacements, the velocities, and the accelerations now, how can we work out what the velocities and accelerations and displacements are at some time t plus delta t in the future, where delta t is a time increment we're going to take? And how we're going to do that is we're going to have to make an assumption about how the system works. And we're going to assume that we have a constant average acceleration between time t and time t plus delta t. So if we have an acceleration, u double dot, at time t, and we're going to assume we have an acceleration u double dot at t plus delta t, then we can we know that our value of the average acceleration over the time step, and the time step here is delta t, over that time step is one half of the acceleration at time t plus the acceleration at time t plus delta t. And so let's just write that down. The average acceleration, one half ut plus ut plus delta t. And you double dots for the double time derivative. And it follows from there that we can also then calculate, if we are making this assumption, we can now calculate our velocity at time plus t, t plus delta t. So our new velocity at this new time is the old velocity, u dot at t. And we can multiply this by the increment, delta t, and the rate, which is the change of acceleration over that time step, which is the average acceleration that we've just assumed. And if we also know the velocity at t plus delta t, it then also follows that we can calculate the displacement at u t plus delta t. So we have, again, we have the displacement at time t that we know, multiplied by the increment, multiplied the, by the rate. And that leaves us with a quadratic expression in time for how the displacements change from time t to time t plus delta t. And we're going to use something similar to this to set up a time integration procedure. In this final equation, or all of these sets of equations, I think it's worth noting, but in this expression for the displacements at time plus delta t, we have an unknown for the acceleration at t plus delta t, in the velocities, everything else is in terms of t, which we already know. However, the displacement is all also unknown at t plus delta t. Again, looking in the velocity expression at u, u dot at t plus delta t, we know the velocity at time t, we know the acceleration at time t, but again, we have this unknown acceleration at t plus delta t. And the same for our expression for the average acceleration over a time step. We already know the acceleration at time t, but we don't know this unknown acceleration at time t plus delta t. So our mission is to find some way that we can find either the displacement at t plus delta t or the acceleration at t plus delta t. And then we have no unknowns in the system. And from there, we can substitute our values for the acceleration at t plus delta t and solve our system of equations. And we're going to solve them at t plus delta t. And when we solve our system of equations at the next time step, this is what we're calling implicit time integration. We're also going to look at explicit time integration where we look at solving this system of equations at time t. 
But in this section of work, we're, calling, we're looking at implicit time integration. So we're trying to find the acceleration at t plus delta t, the velocity at t plus delta t, and the displacements at t plus delta t. So having considered using a constant average, acceler average acceleration over the time step, we now want to use a more general scheme where we don't have to assume a constant average acceleration. And a more general scheme that's commonly used in structural dynamics is what's called Newmark time integration. Okay, so we're gonna rewrite the expression we have for the new velocities and the new displacements in a similar manner to what we did for constant average acceleration. But now we're gonna make some slight changes. So having a look at our first equation for how the velocities change over the time step, instead of one half, u double dot of t plus u double dot of t plus delta t, we're now having a factor delta, or one minus delta, which weights whether we're considering closer to time step t or closer to time step t plus delta t. And again, we have another factor when we look at our displacement equation, alpha, which again has a weighting whether we're considering the acceleration closer to time step t or closer to time step t plus delta t. And with this, we can change completely whether we look at an implicit set of equations where we solve a t plus delta t or even an explicit set of equations where we can set alpha such that we only consider accelerations at time t where we already are. Or in this case, we're going to go with the very generic we could be anywhere between time t and time t plus delta t. Okay, and we're going to rearrange these expressions. We're going to look at this displacement expression first of all. And we're going to rearrange this now in terms of the one unknown on the right-hand side, which is the acceleration of t plus delta t. So rearranging the equation above, we get a new equation here. All for the acceleration at the next time step t plus delta t, all in terms of the other factors we know, which is the displacement at t, the velocity at t, the acceleration at t, but we still have an unknown displacement at t plus delta t. And we've got these numerical parameters. In this case, we've still got the alpha in there, which is something we can set later. Okay. Now we have this expression for the accelerations at t plus delta t. We're going to substitute this into the expression above that for the new velocities, u dot at t plus delta t. We're now going to substitute in our now known expression for the accelerations at t plus delta t. And it's quite a long expression, so I've copied these from the notes. We have the velocity at t plus delta t is the original velocity at time t, plus the increment times the rate, and this is all in terms of terms that are completely defined at time t. So we have displacement at t, velocities at t, accelerations at t, but we still have one term in there that's in terms of the displacement at time t plus delta t. So... Given these expressions we now have for the acceleration at t plus delta t and the velocity at t plus delta t, we're going to recall the equation of equilibrium, the dynamic equation of equilibrium from earlier on in this lecture. So we have the mass times acceleration plus velocity times the damping matrix plus stiffness times displacement equals some, some time varying load vector and we're going to substitute one by one our new expression that we found for u double dot at t plus delta t so the new acceleration and our new velocity we're going to substitute those values these expressions in there and i suggest that you do that on paper yourself and follow the substitutions through take, take some time and a few lines of paper to do that but the final expression you'll get is a mass acceler mass matrix multiplied by all of these factors with u of t, u dot of t, u double dot of t, 
but still with an unknown displacement u at t plus delta t. And we do the same for the acceleration for the velocity term. So we have the damping matrix multiplied by this long expression for the velocity at t plus delta t. And to complete the dynamic equation of motion, we have the stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacements at time t plus delta t must be equal to the right hand side which is the time varying load vector and so what we're going to finally do is rearrange this equation and take most of those known components all onto the right hand side of the equations so we can have something that eventually resembles a set of linear equations k u equals f and now our f vectors complicated by extra terms on the right hand side in terms of the mass matrix multiplied by displacements r time t however we've still got one slight problem in that we still have two terms in the, on the right hand side of this equation that are still written down in terms of the mass acceleration, so here the mass matrix multiplied by the displacement at t plus delta t. And we still have the damping matrix multiplied by the displacements, and it's whole of this expression up front, the displacements u at t plus delta t. So we're going to take, the, take this expression, and we're actually going to take these terms onto the left-hand side, and we're going to define a new matrix instead of just the stiffness on the left hand side k we're going to invent a new effective stiffness matrix and in that we're going to have So we're going to still multiply by the u t plus delta t being the unknown displacement vector that we're going to solve for, but we're going to have the original k matrix plus this factor here, 1 over alpha delta t squared multiplied by the mass matrix. And we also still have, when we take it to the left-hand side, we have plus the C matrix being multiplied by delta over alpha delta T squared. And this whole matrix here is what we're calling our effective stiffness matrix K hat. Okay, if we just go back slightly to an example, if we take those terms onto the left hand side, and now examine what we've got left on the right hand side. We can see lots of terms that will have factors like this 1 over del alpha delta t squared. We have another delta t multiplying by that factor. We have a delta t squared multiplying by that factor or a half even multiplying by that factor. And the same with the expression multiplying out by the damping matrix. So we have lots of factors where these multipliers are reused over and over again. So these are constants that we can calculate up front once and never have to recalculate them again. Once we've set what delta is, what alpha is, and what the time step size delta t is, these are constants. So we can pre-calculate them. So all of these constants that we have left over, we're going to collect them together, call them integration constants, and we're going to define them. And so we have lots of these potential combinations of delta t's, alphas, and deltas. So, for instance, one of them is 1 over alpha delta t squared, which you can see straight away is the pre-multiplier on the mass matrix multiplied by the new displacements that we see on the left-hand side of our equation. And likewise, we have another six of those potential integration constants. So I'm going to rewrite our effective stiffness matrix using these integration constants 
and our effective stiffness matrix k hat now is the k matrix still there plus a naught one over out for delta t squared multiplied by the mass matrix plus a one which is delta over alpha delta t times the C matrix. So now we have our effective stiffness matrix written a lot more concisely with our pre-calculated constants. And now we're going to rearrange everything to set up a, a linear system of equations, k hat, so the effective stiffness matrix, multiplied by the new and still unknown displacement of t times delta t is equal to some effective load vector known at t plus delta t. And our effective load vector, let's just make sure we got the notation consistent, so let's call that r, r hat of t plus delta t is the actual load vector, these are the real external loads on the system, plus these extra terms that we know at time t plus delta t, which we're taking on to the right-hand side of our equations. And so finally, what we have is a system of equations, a linear system of equations, which we can solve in a linear equation solver, where if we know the displacement velocities and accelerations at time t, we can go on to calculate our displacement at time t plus delta t. And scrolling back up the page, if we know the displacement of time t plus delta t, all the way back up, if we know the displacement t plus delta t, we can calculate from this equation, we can calculate our accelerations at t plus delta t, and from the very first equation, once we know the acceleration at t plus delta t, we can also calculate our velocities at t plus delta t. And we can use those values now, once they're now known, on solving this set of equations. These will now become the old displacements that we can now subsequently use to calculate the accelerations, displacement of velocities at another increment of time delta t from where we have just solved.